Welcome to day four of Audi Med Cup TV and the coastal race in Marseille is always a season highlight and that was certainly the case today especially for Team Container who took the win over Audi Azorta sailing team and Audi sailing team powered by All for One. Well uh, Hamish Pepper the tactician of Container and Sebastian Cole from Audi sailing team join us to have a little bit of a chat about the coastal race today. But before we get to talking to the tacticians this morning before racing we were hanging out with the grinders. Each position on the boat comes with a different responsibility. Much like football, every team member has his role. The one that stands out the most? The grinder. They're often right in the thick of it and being the muscles of the boat. The grinder's work is to turn the pedestal that turns the winches on the command of the sail trimmer. It's really physical work. We grind from different positions and we have two movements. And the coffee grinder system has three gears. First, second and third. It really depends on the loads and the position that you're in as to how hard you have to push. It's not just about winding. This is a kinetic link between the chain and the system, the hands, the arms, the biceps, the triceps, the shoulder, the chest, and you need to be very stable. But a grinder's job can be dangerous. Their hands especially are prone to accidents, which can be severe. I'd been trimming in the mainsail with the grinder and when I finished I moved up to windward but I put my hand on the block as I moved and the main sheet trimmer wound my finger into the block. It really hurt. Big, strong and athletic, grinders are without doubt the engine behind the sail. And the grinders certainly had their work cut out for them today on the coastal race, this 35 mile course that ran from Marseille to Cassis and back. Here are the highlights from the start of the race. Day four of the Audi Med Cup was the coastal race for the TP52 regatta. 35 mile course was planned for the fleet all the way down to Cassis and back. The weather was the big factor of the day with the remnants of a cold front passing over Marseille at the same time as the start. Resulting instability on the race course for the first upwind leg split the fleet and split the leaders, who all found themselves together on the left and left behind. Audi all for one was able to get back from a poor start, but it was Audi Azura sailing team that led away all the way down the first part of the course. Well, Seb, I just want to come to you first and talk about the start of the race because Audi uh, sailing team powered by All for One was on the back foot right from the start of the race, weren't you? Yeah, yeah, it was, uh, it was a pretty poor start from us and uh, we um, get locked above the starboard uh, race committee lay line and uh, we had just to be patient and start behind all the others. We wanted really to go on the right side of the course. We couldn't really achieve what we wanted, but we came back quite, quite strong at the top mark and put us right uh, into the fight again. And Hamish, things went a little bit more smoothly on board container I can imagine. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was, it was still a difficult start for us, you know, we, um, we wanted the ride as well but um, we had uh, quantum, it was just a weather of us and, and uh, we knew that if we tacked they were going to probably hit us and so, um, so we are just waiting patiently for them to tack and so they took the rest of us out to the left and the guys that started and went right um, had a big jump on us, so so we just had to um, be patient and keep in the game and not lose too much more and, and just fight when we and when we had a chance. So 
OK, well, we'll come back to the coastal race in a moment. But while all this was going on, the Soto 40s were racing uh, three races. Here are the highlights from that. So the Soto 40 class with three races on the Windward Lured course in the Rad Nord also had to deal with the instability of the back end of the cold front. But the day belonged to Patagonia by Negra. They sailed the smartest and in the first race managed to stay in the lead in spite of three boats being over the line and having to go back. One of those was Marseille's 22. The light conditions made it very tricky, plenty of holes, plenty of trimming, trimming plenty of adjustments. And Goni from Great Britain sailed a very good race to come back in from being over the line at the start. But it was Patagonia that took the lead and won the race on the last leg. The second race saw Eva Drola start at the bottom mark. The pair sailed up in much fresher conditions, a bit more stable, but it was still very, very tricky. Eva Drola, the Spanish boat, got into a commanding lead, but it was still very close on the last run in the freshest breeze of the day. Noticia came back quite well in this race, but really the two protagonists were these two. Iberdrola from Spain, Patagonia from Argentina. One little brooch at the end gave the challenge away. Iberdrola sailed across to take their only win of the day. The last race, again in better conditions for everybody, Again saw Marseille over the line early at the start, requiring them to go back. Conditions seemed to be better on the right-hand side of the course, and Patagonia by Negra sailed fastest upwind of all the boats. Leading at the top mark, it was Good downwind sailing, just what the Soto 40 class is all about. The Argentinians staying in control all the way around, in spite of the very puffy conditions. So Iberdrola still lead the Soto 40 uh, leaderboard on day four with Patagonia by Negra, the visiting South American team following along in second place. Well, we're going to head back to the coastal race now. Here's all the highlights from the second part of the race. So when, when the fleet appeared back from Cassis, it was container with a nice lead. They just had a short two-sail reach to do round the back of the Friol Islands. Second place was the Audi Azura sailing team that had led all the way down. And third, coming back into the race after some problems, was... Audi Azura, uh, Audi uh, All for One, but Container, the German boat, took the win, and because of Container's big dominance over the rest of the fleet, including Quantum, they now move up into the lead. Well, the big mover of the day today was actually Audi Azura team, who moved from sixth place up to third, and then uh, Container, of course, moving Quantum down into second place. Hamish, that must have been quite a moment for you guys. I mean, I know there's still one, one day to go, but everybody looked really excited on board after the win today. Oh, definitely. You know, it was our first win of the uh, Med Cup uh, series and, um, you know, and Udo, our owner, arrived today and so um, he, was, uh, he was very, very happy with the team. So, um, of course, we're, we're pretty pleased. Was there anything, was there any moment in particular that won the race for you today? Was it just sailing well the, right the way through? Yeah, I think it was just, um, this, everyone did the job very well. You know, we, um, we had a few breaks when we needed to and, and we sailed well when we needed to. And so um, we caught back up into the race and we were a little bit patient when you was a long race and just kind of stuck to our game plan and, and, um, and it eventually paid off. So um, it was good. Sebastian, you had a very interesting time out there on the water today. Tell us about what happened in that second part of the race when you stopped. Yeah, we had to stop at one stage on the way to, to Cassis. We were sailing downwind with 20-25 knots of wind and uh, 
boat speed was around 18 knots and uh, we uh, hit something uh, in the rudder and uh, here and uh, our man couldn't really steer the boat anymore and uh, try, trying to assess what's, what was happening and um, at one stage we realized that we uh, hurt uh, a big fish and we call this kind of fish sunfish in English I think and, uh, and we had to stop and drop the spinnaker and, and go head to wind, go in reverse and uh, bear away again and host the kite and by this stage uh, we were last of the race and uh, was pretty disappointed because we are fighting for the second place with Synergy at this time. So uh, yeah, we restart the race from there and... Yeah, so to make up and to get into third place, something drastic must have happened there. What, what, what was the call? Yeah, the call was, um, you know, on the tactics, you, you, you're trying to, to, um, to uh, manage the risk. And by being last at this stage, we, uh, we took the maximum risk uh, to play uh, the left-hand side of the course, going back to the, to the free, free wildland in Marseille. So um, uh, we thought that the left would have uh, paid, but not, not so much. So uh, we are a little bit lucky on that. But uh, we, from there, we sailed very well, and uh, we managed to grab the, the third place. Yeah. Well, the final day tomorrow, and the teams are very, very close on the leaderboard, so it's looking like another exciting day of racing. We're back here at 12.50 CET. We'll see you for more live action on the final day of the Marseille Trophy. Thank you.